Curry. BestInjuryCare.com Tired of looking at stained carpets, dirty tile, or grout? Call Silverback Restoration. 414-5312. Make your flooring look great again. Stains, pet odors, allergies. Call Silverback Restoration. 414-5312. From serving our country to serving our community. Silverback Restoration. 414-5312. Residential and commercial. And now, three rooms for just $99. Check their website, silverbackrestoration.com. Hurricane Irma visited Ocala through the night and left downed trees, flooded streets, and more than 100,000 people without electricity in Marion County alone. Marion County Sheriff's deputies were already helping remove fallen trees using chainsaws hours before Hurricane Irma made a direct hit on Marion County. Social media connected many of those in the community who were reporting power outages and posting photos and videos of the wind, the rain, and the damage. More than five million million homes and businesses were without electricity in the state. Authorities are encouraging residents to stay where you are unless it is absolutely necessary that you travel, even if the weather looks improved. The reason for the cautious approach to getting things back to normal is because of the potential for unreported downed power lines. If you come across a fallen power line, call 911. Do not attempt to touch any power lines or drive over them. Always assume that every power line is energized. Also, stay away from standing water and debris, which could also potentially conceal a live wire. Additional recommendations are to turn off your circuit breakers, disconnect all electrical appliances that are still plugged in, and turn off all wall switches immediately. If your roof or windows leak, water in your walls and ceiling may come into contact with electrical wiring. Remember to never stand in water while operating switches or unplugging any electrical device. Also, be sure to store food on shelves that will be safely out of the way of contaminated water in case of flooding. Obtain block ice or dry ice to keep your refrigerator as cold as possible if the power is going to be out for a prolonged period of time. 50 pounds of dry ice should be able to keep a normal-sized freezer cold for about two days. Additionally, if you are in a flooded area or you are aware of a flooded area, please report it to authorities. Our efforts as residents to help the various agencies do their jobs is going to be very important. To report road flooding in Marion County, call 671-8686. Within the city limits of Ocala, call 629-CITY. If you're in the city limits of Bellevue and you see a flood, report that flood to 245-7021. And if you're in Donellan, the number to call to report a flood is 465 85 Nine zero oh. For non-emergency police assistance, call the Marion County Sheriff's Office at 732-9111 or in Ocala, the Ocala Police Department at 369-7070. In Bellevue, non-emergency calls should be made to the Bellevue Police Department at 245-7044 and the phone number for the Donnellan Police Department for non-emergencies is 465 85 10. And of course, all emergency calls should be made to 911. Call us here at WOCA The Source at 732 8000 if you need any of those numbers repeated or if you need an address or any other information that we may have that will help you after the storm. We are WOCA The Source, your emergency alert station. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, 22 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. I think uh, the last time that uh, a storm hit Tampa the way this one hit Tampa yesterday was 1922. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I think, I think they said there was like 14,000 people living there at that time. 14,000. And now, now there's like, I don't know, a few million, I'm sure. I don't know how many people live there. Um, 
which has really nothing to do with our next guest. Uh, Martha Brockenbrough is on the phone. She's a journalist, a researcher, an historian, a storyteller, and she's got a book called Alexander Hamilton Revolutionary. Martha Brockenbrough, good morning. I hope I'm saying, I, I know I screwed it up a little bit. Martha, good morning, Martha. <laughs> Good morning. I'm so I'm so glad uh, to be with you, and so glad that you made it through that hurricane, which does actually have a lot to do with Alexander Hamilton. Oh, explain. What do you mean? Shall I tell you what? Okay. Yeah. So the re- the reason that he made it to the United States was because of a hurricane. Really? At the time, it's true. At the time, it was it was the biggest hurricane to hit the West Indies where he was born. It was the biggest one recorded in history. It was a terrible storm. Tons of damage. It, it flung ships ashore. Um, it, you know, killed a lot of people, left a lot of others homeless. And he wrote a letter about the hurricane to his father, who had run out on on the family. Oh wow! Um, wow. And uh, the letter he showed the letter to a friend who was a mentor to him, and the friend got it published anonymously in a newspaper. And people wanted to know who wrote this incredible letter that so captured the horrors. Of of this hurricane, and they, when they found out it was a kid, they decided, well, this kid needs to go be educated in the colonies, and maybe he'll come back and be a doctor and help us out. Really? So, so we already had yeah. that reputation of being a great place to be educated. It's we did, um, you know, certainly better than um, the West Indies where he was born. Wow, that that is fascinating. I, I never had any clue about that. So, is this something we don't know about? For wh- why don't we know this? Why are some pl- some figures from history not taught about? Or it seems like well, so. F- for a long time, people viewed Alexander Hamilton as an elitist and as a monarchist, and, and this was really a misunderstanding of some of the things he said, and it was also, um, you know, he, he sometimes said dumb things, which makes him a person, I suppose, don't we all sometimes <laughs> yeah, express ourselves poorly? Yeah. And uh, so, you know, other founding fathers were president. He was one of the few who never was elected president. There were a number of reasons for it. Um, but anyway, so now we know a whole lot more about him. And, you know, once people are more familiar with the incredible arc of his life story and all that he accomplished and the many amazing qualities he had, I think that we're, we will not soon forget him and why he's on the $10 bill. So going back to his uh, his well-received letter, did that, did that play true? throughout the rest of his life? I don't mean that's just necessarily the ability to write, but I mean the ability to analyze things and see them differently and then to, I guess, to get other people to see it the same way. Because that's what a good writer does. A good writer sees things differently and then helps the rest of us see it that same way. I think that's absolutely true. And, and you know, what it shows is that Alexander Hamilton could see a lot of disparate information, could weigh it, could make great decisions. He even did this um, as a young man during the Revolutionary War. The British had a general, Sir Henry Clinton, who was not not, not really great at, at the work of generaling. And after the British took New York City, Clinton was living in a fancy house that overlooked the Hudson River, and the house had a garden that had a pavilion, and he would go take naps every afternoon in the pavilion. And some people in Washington staff argued that it would be a great idea to kidnap him, you know, to seize this British general. Alexander Hamilton said, hey, wait, let's think about this. If we seize him, then perhaps the British will replace him with someone who's, who's competent. And, you know, that came into play a few years later. Clinton was the same general who failed to get Cornwallis reinforcements at Yorktown, and that was the battle that ended the war. Really? So Alexander Hamilton's ability to be farsighted, yes, he expressed himself incredibly well, but this was um, just, this was who he was. He could see the future in a way that few could. The, the whole dual thing has always been a, a, an amazing part of our history, the fact that we even allowed duels to settle, settle an argument. Mm-hmm. Well, we we didn't. They were illegal. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, oh, and Alexander Hamilton was a lawyer. So was Aaron Burr. They did it anyway. Um, they crossed the river to New Jersey, 
um, and uh, this is where they had their fatal duel. Now, there was a purpose for these. They weren't meant to, usually to be fatal. Uh, many, many people had duels and walked away from them. Aaron Burr walked away from a duel with Alexander Hamilton's brother-in-law. Um, but, you know, this one went badly. And, and the purpose of the duel was after someone's honor had been impugned, the purpose of the duel was to prove that actually, you know, no, I am an honorable man. And um, so Alexander Hamilton had written a letter when Aaron Burr was running for president. This letter explained his many reasons why Burr should not be elected, and one of them was that Burr was in financial straits, and this left him open to influence, uh, corrupting influence of foreign governments. Wow, I wonder, and, I wonder how different <laughs> we would have been as a country if he had gone on and become, uh, I'm talking about Hamilton now, become yes. president. It's a really good question, and it's kind of impossible to have that the crystal ball, um, yeah. but... I, I'm not sure that Hamilton would have been a great president. One of his weaknesses, he wasn't a very compromising man. He was really, really principled, um, but he had a hard time. He didn't suffer fools gladly, and sometimes mm. he let his arguments get in the way. And this is why he and George Washington worked really well together. Washington had wisdom, where sometimes Hamilton didn't. Wow. And uh, Alexander Hamilton had uh, uh, life against him since he was born. Since he was born out of wedlock, he was an orphan, and sometimes people would shun those people. And but yet he rose up, and he's one of the greats. It's it's really true, and he he didn't like to talk about the circumstances of his birth. John Adams, John and Abigail Adams. John Adams was our second president, and his wife Abigail. They would uh, write these letters back and forth to each other, just full of the most elegant insults. And Adams, among other things, called Alexander Hamilton the bastard brat of a Scottish peddler. Oh. So not only low class, but also a bastard. Um, and you know, this was what Alexander Hamilton wanted to be a great man and to leave that baggage behind. He fought all his life to do that. Maybe maybe that's why the tickets are so expensive to the Broadway musical. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you seen the musical? <laughs> I, I have seen the musical and I loved it and I'm going to see it again when it comes to Seattle where I live. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, I wanted to go see it. Then I looked at the prices. I said, holy cow. <laughs> You know, it's expensive, but if you get on their mailing list, you can get the prices at face value. And it's it's still expensive, but it's worth every penny. Nice. Uh, well, thank you for being on the air. I noticed that you were number one in your category on Amazon. I don't know if you know that, so congratulations for that. Uh, oh, thank you. I also noticed I can get the book as a Kindle, which I love, um, so I'm going to do that. Uh, I, Robin mentioned we didn't receive the book yet because of the storm, so... Right. Uh, when, it, when it arrives here, I'll make sure I give it away to one of our listeners. Uh, Martha Brockenbro, do you have a website you want to direct us to? I do. It's just um, my name, MarthaBrockenbro.com. All right. Did you have fun doing this? Was was the research fun in any way? It was, well, it was really arduous, and I wanted this to, book to be as accurate as I possibly could, but it was really fun. It's so much fun seeing his handwriting and seeing you know, how it looks different over the years. I found a, a note that he'd written um, sending a, a, a general, the British general's dog during a battle had wandered across em enemy lines and it ended up in Washington's camp. And so Hamilton wrote a note returning that dog. And just, I love little details like that. They make people, these historical figures, human beings. Um, and as I said to my kids, finally, someone is paying me to do homework. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Oh, I can't wait to read it now. I, I feel like the only way I really know him is Aaron Burr, the musical, and my $10 bill. That's about all I know. <laughs> and that's a, that's a good start. There's so much more. You will not believe this guy's life story. It's extraordinary. Very nice. Okay. Thank you so much, Martha. What an honor. Thank you for being on our show. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. Thank you. We'll be right back. Today in Florida Ag News, I'm a Southeast Ag Now, but last week, in anticipation of Hurricane Irma, legislative leaders cancel committee meetings that were scheduled for this week. According to a story from the New Service of Florida, Senate President Joe Negron and House Speaker Richard Corcoran called off what would have been the first committee meeting.